Hello everybody, Wild here. In this episode, we are going to take the boilerplate code that we wrote in the last episode and we will be coding a system that allows us to create our player, which will interact with the ball later on. The way we are going to do it is by creating a function that sets up all of the paddle's properties, such as loading in the sprite and setting its physics. Then what we want is a way to control that paddle. We will be creating another function which does just that. We will be taking the position of the mouse and moving the paddle according to that position, allowing the player to move the paddle using the mouse. Alright, so before we get into the code, first of all we will need an image to represent our player. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to where you can download this um, white rectangle which will be representing uh, our player. So once you've downloaded that, you can put it in your assets folder. And then we can get started with loading in our uh, player. So first of all, um, like I said in the last episode, uh, the preload function is what's going to be used to load our sprites and music and whatever we are going to use um, into cache, so into the game. Uh, so the way we can do that, so we're going to load our player and say game dot load uh, game dot load dot image because we are loading an image. Then the first parameter is going to be our ID or our key, I guess. Um, so we can set that to paddle. Um, this is what's going to be used to reference our image. So later on, when we want to create our paddle, we can actually use this key to reference it that we are using this image. Think of it as a name. And then we need our path to that um, image. So we're going to say assets and then paddle.png, assuming you have named it that. Now, uh, we're going to need to create a function which will create the paddle. So we can go all the way down below our update function and say function create paddle. We're going to need two parameters. We're going to need an X and a Y, which will be used to uh, create the paddle at those positions. We will be taking uh, these parameters in and setting the positions uh, to that. Uh, actually, I should make the text a bit better, uh, bigger. I'm sorry if that was too small. Um, all right, so first of all, we're going to need to create our paddle variable, which we'll be returning later on. So we can say var paddle, set that to game.add.sprite. That's the way we add a sprite. The first parameter is going to be our x-axis. We're going to be taking what's up here, uh, here from the parameter, which is going to be inputted uh, when we create our paddles. We're going to put that as the x-axis, and then we're going to need our y-axis. Uh, which is also going to be taken from here. Then we need our key, which we reference from up here. So we can say uh, the key is paddle. That means it's going to use that image that we have just loaded in. Then we need to set our anchor point. So think of an image that uh, think of the image that makes up your sprite as a rectangle. The upper left corner is zero zero, and the lower right corner is one one. Zero point five is the middle. So let's go ahead and do that. So we say paddle dot anchor dot set to I'm going to set 0 0.5 in, uh, in the x-axis uh, axis, and um, 0 0.5 in the y-axis. So this means that we are, okay, so we are putting the anchor point in the middle. Uh, this means when setting the position of the sprite, you are setting the position of the anchor of the sprite in the world. So that's pretty much it with the anchor points. If you need any help with anchor points, please leave it in the comments and I will respond. Um, but yeah, just think, it, uh, think of it as kind of an anchor point where you are setting that position of the anchor in the world, um, not really the sprite. The sprite just kind of follows the anchor. Um, right, so now what we need to do is enable physics. So let's go ahead and do that. So game.physics, uh, physics.arcade.enable, and say panel. Now, um, when creating well, when we, are enable, uh, when we are enabling physics, what we are really doing is creating a body. Bodies are what physics impact, such as velocity or acceleration. In this case, we'll be using it to detect collision later on in the series. Um, and then we need to do one last thing. Uh, we need to uh, use that body that we have just created. If you take out this and then try and use paddle.body, it's not going to work. This basically enables the body. So with body we can do cool things such as velocity and um, and collision. So we're going to do collide world bounds, and we'll set that to true. Uh, collide world bounds will keep our paddle from going out of the game bounds, which is our screen. And one last thing that we need to do is to return that paddle. So when we create when we call this create paddle, we can set it to something, and we'll set it to paddle. It will make sense later on. Um, so actually, let's go ahead and create those paddles um, right now. 
So we can go ahead and not create function. Create function just runs on one frame, or well, not one frame, but it just sets everything up from taking positions and placing them on screen. Um, so we're going to need to create some variables actually first of all. So above our preload uh, function, we're going to create a oops var paddle one and var paddle two because we're going to have two paddles. Uh, one is the player and one is going to be the computer or a second player. And in our create function, we need to create our paddle using this function. So we can say uh, paddle one is equal to create paddle. And we'll need to set it to, I'm going to set it to zero, that's on the x-axis, and game.world.center y. It's going to center it in the middle of the y-axis, or in the middle of the screen. Then uh, we need to create our second paddle. And we can just copy paste that and change the uh, position. So we'll say game.world.width. And I'll say minus 16 because our sprite is 32 uh, pixels wide, and that's half of it. Uh, because our, our anchor point is in the middle, and we basically need to half that to get the whole sprite. Um, then in the, we'll keep the Y the same, actually. So this now should make more sense with the returns. Um, so now we are setting paddle uh, to paddle 1 and paddle 2. And now we need to make a way to control our paddles, right? Because right now um, they are just going to be static. They're not going to move. Um, so we need to fix that. So we can create another function, say function, control paddle. Oops. And first of all, we need to take in the paddle. Which paddle are we going to control? Which one do you want to control? Um, so we're going to pass that in, um, and we need to pass in a y-axis. So. Uh, let's take the paddle, uh, paddle.y, because our paddle has a y property. You can do that. You can say x or width or height to access the sprite's properties. So we can say paddle.x, uh, paddle.y, sorry, and set that to y. y is going to be representing our mouse uh, y position, which we'll be using to control our paddle. Now we need to set some boundaries to say if the paddle is at the, at the top of the screen, then we need to make sure it doesn't go out of the screen. So we can say if paddle dot y is smaller than paddle dot height divided by two, then set it to paddle dot y equals paddle dot height divided by two. Say else if paddle dot y is bigger than game dot world dot height minus paddle dot height divided by two. Then we'll do paddle dot y equals game dot world dot height minus paddle dot height divided by two. So it's just going to keep our paddle in boundaries of the screen. Um, game dot world dot height just uh, represents the height, which is six hundred pixels. We can go ahead and write six hundred pixels in here instead of game dot world dot height. But since we want it to work, if we change our resolution, we should use that. It is more um, consistent to use that, and it's a lot better. So what we need to do now is actually use this control paddle function to set that to our paddle one, because paddle two will not be controlled by the player. So we can go ahead and update function, which gets called every frame, that's why it's called uh, update. So we can go ahead and say control paddle, let's say uh, the paddle, we're going to need paddle one, and then we need our y, which is game.input.y. This is going to be the mouse position, the y position of the mouse, and our paddle will just follow that y position um, because we are setting it right here. Okay, so after we have finished that, we can go ahead and go into our Phoenix web server that we have created last episode. And once you have opened that, and I have opened the console, and I see that I have two errors. And after debugging and searching, I have found out that I have accidentally misspelled physics in the create paddle function. So we can go ahead and save that and refresh, and there should be no errors. And we should have two paddles, one that's movable and one that's stationary. And once we move our mouse, we can see that it can move on the y-axis. So that was pretty much it. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to never miss content from my channel, I upload weekly, then please go ahead and subscribe. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. And until next time, goodbye.